Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here at the Technical Forum at the Group Exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries on the Hannover Fair 2018. I invite you to sit down, order a drink and enjoy the next presentation here. Our speaker will be Mr. Shubir Boishutori, the Vice President Research and Engineering at Precision Combustion Inc. And he will present compact hydrogen and zinc gas generators as well as fuel cell systems. Please welcome with me Mr. Boishutori. Thank you, Pat. Um, good afternoon. Um, I'll be um, talking about some of the things that we are developing at Precision Combustion. So, uh, my partner in crime is Tony Anderson. He's also available at the booth, just over, over the wall there. And if you wish to speak with us, you can come by and speak with us. So we are located in Connecticut. Connecticut is between New York and Boston. We're a small company. We're about 42 to 45 people. Um, our focus is on developing our focus is on developing um, uh, innovation and product development and we make catalytic reactors. Our catalytic reactors are used for everything from burners to reformer systems um, uh, and a bunch of other things and our focus is going from concept to advanced prototypes. So that's where um, we do. So beyond advanced prototypes we hand it on to somebody else. So our core technologies, different areas, we work in power and propulsion, work in combustion, um, purification, and reactors and sensors. And you can see an assortment of products. We make everything from generators for military generators all the way to syngas generators for industrial applications. So today, um, I wanted to focus on just on some of our reforming applications, more specifically the ones related to fuel cell generators and hydrogen generation. So as you are all mostly familiar with, there are three types of reforming, partial oxidation, steam reforming, and autothermal reforming. Uh, we work in all three areas, and all three reactors use our catalyst. We use what the microlith catalysts uh, that allow us to make these things extremely small, uh, high selectivity, uh, and uh, with very good heat flux, for instance, in the steam reforming applications, and they can be um, process intensified. For instance, the autothermal reformer includes the sulfur trap, the steam generator, the reactor, startup, everything. And the focus has been on developing complete systems, complete fuel cell systems, uh, hydrogen generation for syngas for industrial applications, and there are applications which require, which use PEM stacks, which require high purity hydrogen, and so we've been working on some of those applications. Um, so the catalyst, just a couple uh, words on the catalyst. We use a mesh type material. We've uh, patented it, developed the coating over many, many years. So when you're talking about coating catalysts on mesh type material, these are very fine meshes, and you have to be very careful about the adhesion as well as the cohesion. So the adhesion means that the catalyst has to be adhered to the base metal, and the cohesion means the catalyst between itself has to stay together so it doesn't fall off. And that's a process we've matured, and we do it in an automated process. Um, we hold the process uh, proprietary, but we patent all the reactors and uh, reactor design. Okay, so I'll get down to... Uh, uh, SOFC generator system that I wanted to discuss today. So if you generally classify, take a generator, these are the 10 components that you would have in there. Uh, the reformer, you need sulfur cleanup or contaminant cleanup if you're using diesel or jet fuels. You have the SOFC stack, uh, power conditioning, which is the power electronics for whatever voltage you're looking for. You need water recovery, these systems have to be water neutral. Uh, you have to have a burner, and uh, it has to be, it's used for startup as well as for tail gas for thermal optimization. Heat exchangers and flow balancers, very critical with SOFC systems to make sure we have uh, uh, the delta P between the two sides are okay, the temperatures, the rise of temperature, rate of temperature rise change is okay. And then there's pumps and blowers and sensors. 
these we have to we end up using commercial off the shelf components because these become cost sensitive and reliability become an issue and finally controls and and packaging so PCI, we work on all these components except the fuel cell. So we use the fuel cell that's most appropriate for the application. So I'll talk a little bit about all of these components in terms of um, where we are and what we are doing, just to give you an overview of the concept. So we work on everything from about 100 watts to about 300 kilowatts. We've actually built systems um, all, the way, all the way through that range. And they depend upon different, different applications, whether it is for natural gas, propane, uh, diesel, jet fuel. So it varies what the application is. And these systems are capable, when, in, when using diesel fuel, to go up to 3,000 ppm sulfur. So if you're familiar with the NATO fuel standards, the specs are that you have to be able to deal with 3,000 ppm sulfur. And, and so typically, fuel cell stacks are it's not a good idea to expose them to any kind of sulfur. So we've developed a sulfur cleanup approach, which removes all the sulfur before it goes to the stack. You know, when I say all the sulfur, I mean it's probably in the PPB range, but uh, very low. So you're probably familiar with many sulfur cleanup approaches, hydro desulfurization, um, sorption, other approaches. We've developed an approach we call catalytic reductive desulfurization. So in this process, we simultaneously produce hydrogen and convert the sulfur compounds in the fuel to H2S. And H2S is a much more readily removed compound, and it's done in industry every day. It's been going on for years. So we can use industrially available sorbents to remove the H2S to very, uh, to very low ppms, and then the reformate can be fed to a fuel cell stack or for membrane separators. Um, so this is uh, some data on, on a 10 kilowatt system, 10 kilowatt electric system. The data here just to show you, you know, uh, with different sulfur levels, 20 ppm all the way to 3,000 ppm sulfur level, um, what the efficiency is, and the three color bars are for three different power levels, 20, 30, and 40 kilowatt thermal. And you can look at the reforming efficiency stays about the same, about 80 percent, even throughout the range of sulfur in the fuel. And the sulfur is eventually removed from the reformate. So in the product, you have no idea of any sulfur coming out. And typically, if, you, if you're looking at an equilibrium, if you're looking at under those conditions, what um, equilibrium would say, if you look at the experimental results, they're fairly close. They're within, within a few percentage points of what you would expect. And again, in these, um, in these uh, reformers, our focus was to minimize the amount of hydro uh, methane formed. Um, we can control that to a higher or lower level depending upon the application. So the reforming efficiency is then generally about 80%, and if you're comparing it to equilibrium, it's greater than 95% in general. Now this is for a 10 kilowatt system. If for a 1.5 kilowatt system, again, similar results, reforming efficiency about 80%, and the and the composition of the reformate about the same when you're using an ATR approach, for instance. Again, I'm not going to dwell on the, there's partial oxidation and steam reforming. I'll get into steam reforming a little later, but the products are all different for each of those. And then there's the desulfurization approach. So in general, people have been using pellets. When you use pellets, you get a gradual breakthrough over time. And what happens is, let's say if you design a pellet for, say, uh, 200 hours, um, you expect at about 50 hours a breakthrough to occur. But if you, uh, so the, what we do is take the sorbent material and put it on meshes. And when we put it on meshes, we get a very sharp breakthrough. So if it's designed for 200 hours, it'll break through at 200 hours. So we know very clearly where it's going to break through. And the capacity, therefore, is also larger because we make more of the surface, sorbent service available to the gas phase. And so we've been building these for, uh, in, in, in several applications, and they, sh they uh, they seem to be working fairly well. Okay, next item is power conditioning and electronics. So when you're building a fuel cell system, this becomes fairly challenging because you have to work with what the stack is capable of doing. If you have a load that ramps up too quickly or, or shuts down too quickly, you have to, your power electronics has to be able to offset that. 
Whether you use ultra caps or rechargeable batteries, it all depends, but those things have to be compensated for. So in terms of what we do, we have a power conditioning charge and load system. We have a rechargeable battery, um, output protection, and external load protection. And all these are built into the power conditioning system that is all packaged within the box of the system. We developed the power conditioning and management system internally uh, that allows us flexibility in terms of what we do. But then in the end, it's a custom board with a custom battery that gets done. Uh, water neutral operation. So some of these applications we're working for, these are deployed units, so you need to have water neutrality. Uh, so when you're talking about water recovery from these systems, um, it's important to note that uh, 60, if you can get 60% of water recovered from the exhaust, even at about 75% fuel utilization in the stack, you can get water neutral operation. And so We've tested our water recovery system over all the way up to 50 degrees C, air temperature, and we are over 60% water recovery for those conditions. So under all conditions, or under majority of the conditions, we seem to operate with water neutral. In fact, it's water surplus in most conditions. Um, okay. There's a term called the tail wagging the dog. In many cases, the burner controls the reformer and the stack. And, and so this is where we've developed a, a burner, which sounds simple, but it's a, two it's, it's a dual burner. It can burn both anode exhaust as well as diesel fuels, and it has built-in heat exchangers and equalizers for flow and temperature equalizing. This is actually the key piece that, that makes all these, the reformers, the stacks, uh, work together because uh, without this, everything falls apart. And you have to be able to control the temperatures very carefully. You have to be able to turn it up, turn it down. Uh, and, and so we've developed a burner that allows us to do both uh, use for startup as well as for uh, steady state, use diesel as well as anode exhaust. It's a single burner that allows us to do. Again, I have, uh, the scale isn't there on the temperature, but you can see it starts up very quickly and you can control it very readily. It operates very stable. So your uh, anode, in, um, anode inlet, cathode inlet, these things are all very well balanced for, for all the systems. And finally, we've taken all the system and connected it to several stacks, uh, some profiles. We run it for about you know, thousands of hours, several hundred hours on, on, on stacks with JP8 and diesel and very stable performance. And this is a picture of Tony Anderson across the wall with a mock-up of the prototype. Obviously, we can't build, bring the actual prototype around. We've got a 3D printed version of it such that we can travel with it and we don't get uh, hassled at customs, um, more importantly. And, and, and so the entire packaging, this system, if you, if you were to visit PCI in the next few months, you'd be able to come see it operating at our place. So we're working on three levels of systems, a one kilowatt system, a two kilowatt system, and a 10 kilowatt system. Uh, 10 kilowatt for APUs, one kilowatt for um, uh, small portable systems. And of course, on the hydrogen purification side, um, um, we've taken, we've done um, water gas shift reactors, pressure swing adsorption, membrane separators for PEM applications generally. And here are some the turnkey syngas generation skits that are used for industrial applications. We've operated these for over 5,000 hours with over 60,000 normal meter cubes of syngas produced with each of these units. And then the steam reformer. We've got steam reformers coupled with membrane separators or PSAs to produce high purity hydrogen for PEM applications, let's say. And these can operate on diesel or, or low salt, very low sulfur diesel, two to five ppm sulfur, as well as natural gas. And these are, again, very compact systems that have the heater and the um, uh, reformer integrated together. Um, system, you know, these produce about, um, about two and a half kilograms per hour sort of rate systems. Very high purity and about 80% of the efficiency of hydrogen in the fuel coming out into it. So in summary, uh, you know, several a simple approach for compact reformation and desulfurization of high sulfur fuels. Uh, we've developed BOP components and packaging, um, complete generators. We're in the process of doing three sets of generators and, um, and high purity hydrogen generation for PEM applications. So. And if you have more questions, you can come over next door and, and visit us. Um.
we'll be there. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. And we still have time for a short question. If there is a question in the audience, this is not your chance now. If not, uh, just go to booth E78 uh, for any further question. And go uh, there you find Precision Combustion Inc. Um, yeah, and you can get in contact there. Thank you very much for the attendance. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thanks. Thank you.